The Chartered Industries of Singapore Ultimax is one of the most renowned light machine guns in the world, yet has never really been adopted to the full extent of what it was capable of. The only real military it served was the Singaporean Armed Forces. It was used by multiple other countries and, read more, although there is much to be said about Afghan National Army, Afghan National Police, counterfeits, and the illicit small arms trade in Afghanistan, in this video we are specifically looking at the legal shotgun sellers in Kabul. These shotguns are legal to purchase and own, essentially being, read more, according to a recently published interview with the current director of Seska's Ed Bro Joe Uka in a Czech media platform, the small arms company is currently in the process of launching a small arms plant in Egypt. The director Lubomir Kovarik mentioned in the interview, read more. The Stoner 86 Ares LMG1 unfortunately never received much fanfare in the time that it was produced. Originally intended as Eugene Stoner's concept idea for the saw trials in what would later become the FN Herstal M249, it never reached full production potential. Truly a shame considering the, read more, the Technical Directorate for Military Production TDMP, is a defense armaments manufacturing arm set up within the popular mobilization forces that were established in Iraq during 2014 to combat the growing threat of the so-called Islamic, read more, Osprey Publications has recently come out with a new title in the weapon series of books, The Anti-Tank Rifle, it is a light history of the anti-tank rifle from the First World War to the beginning of the Cold War. For those not familiar with the weapon, read more. Program Executive Officer P.E.O. Soldier out of Fort Beaver, Virginia recently tweeted an image depicting U.S. Army Brigadier General Anthony Potts, currently commanding P.E.O. Soldier on the test range, firing a test rifle, a part of emerging technologies for next. Read more. The C-96 broom handle Mauser is certainly one of the most iconic self-loading handguns of the First World War. Osprey Publications has recently published a title about the C-96, written by Jonathan Ferguson, curator of firearms at the Royal Armouries Museum. Read more. Unfortunately, an inevitable result of any large-scale military counter-insurgency operation are unintended, innocent civilian casualties otherwise known as collateral damage. The questions stated to military planners are not if, but instead, when, how any, read more, this is Marouane M's second guest post for TFB. His first guest post is about the Istanbul Military Museum, small arms of the Ottoman Empire if readers are interested in reading more from him. In addition, we previously reported on the Sham R3, but as promised, read more, this is Marouane Maklid's third guest post for TFB. His first guest post is about the Istanbul Military Museum, small arms of the Ottoman Empire. The Palestinian Hamas movement and its military wing, the Azaldin al-Qassam brigades in Gaza surprised many observers, read more, in a recent propaganda video released by the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, report number 190 to be precise, a 762 by 51 mm NATO MK-17 scar was spotted over the course of the propaganda video. Of course, there is nothing new about this development, we've covered, read more, at this year's Singapore Air Show has... The BR-18 is the latest version of what began as the BMCR, or Bullpup Multi-Role Combat Rifle which initially debuted at the 2014 Singapore Air Show. Read more, a recently released Marine Corps Times article covers a discussion with a MARSOC spokesman who confirmed in no uncertain terms that the command was not interested in an M27 IR procurement program. The reasons stated involved the tactics, techniques, and procedures. Read more, the Surefire MAG 5-60 and MAG 5-100 magazines were initially released in 2010 and received much interest from all over the shooting community. However, insofar as actually being used by operating forces, it appears that their adoption has been somewhat limited. There is, read more, we previously covered the Marine Corps M27 in last week's episode and will be really getting into the weeds here in terms of some of the issues and benefits the weapon system afforded to infantry marines. Topics such as the choice of magazines for the automatic rifle, why it was so accurate and read more, a recently published news video from Arizona-based 3TV, Arizona Family Channel concerning domestic violence in the U.S. Army included a photograph of a U.S. soldier from the 7th Special Forces Group based out of Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. 
the soldier is posing with. Read more. The fiscal year 2019 Department of Defense budget proposal has been submitted to Congress and will take some time before we find out if it is approved or denied. But within it there is a specific budget document titled Counter Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Read more. We recently wrote about enhanced tactical arms with their new grip design at SHOT 2018. But during the show, we were able to get a behind-the-scenes look at the small company's efforts to replicate the developmental history of the M4 carbine, from the early beginnings, read more, often completely overshadowed by the larger SHOT Show. The antique gun show is strategically held during the weekend after SHOT Show, although this year it was held the weekend before. Although possibly not the best antique show in the United States, it certainly, read more, the Israeli draw light machine gun was born during a time of necessity. What would later become the State of Israel was fighting off numerous enemies all around it and needed every weapon system possible. Through this endeavor, a sympathetic employer who formerly worked at Johnson Automatics helped read more Kydex or Bolteran holsters are all the rage these days. But how are they actually made? With what tools and techniques do these excellent or sometimes poor IWB or OWB setups come from? In this episode we look at a local Kydex holster maker and go through all the steps it takes to bring one. Read more, Japan was perhaps the least prepared of all the powers during the Second World War to have an issued submachine gun in use by combat troops. Indeed the Japanese Type 100 only saw a production run of at maximum 30,000 weapons. A small fraction of the total amount of the Japanese Imperial forces read more, the Amelie light machine gun was Spain's answer to what the Ministry of Defense needed in a squad automatic weapon, as a base of fire for the Spanish infantry fire team. It was based on the late war German MG45 design, or as we see here, possibly just another version of the Mauser CETME light read more, along with our visit to Battlefield Las Vegas where we were able to fire ZMT's UKM-2000 general purpose machine gun, TFB was also able to get close and personal with the company's anti-material rifle entry. The tour is a .50 BMG manually operated, magazine fed, read more, at the tail end of SHOT Show, TFB writers Miles and Nathaniel received a very unique and rare opportunity to get hands-on with the Zach Lady Mechanics Natanao ZMT, UKM 2000 in the United States while at the Popular Vegas shooting range, Battlefield Las Vegas. Read more, now more than a week has passed since SHOT 2018, and we at TFB are finally recuperating from what is most likely the busiest single week that the entire team will have all year. With SHOT Show over, we can finally go back to the boring business of gun writing and video. Read more, we previously covered bad company tactical on TFB in SHOT Show's past and looked closely at the company's R2S quick detachment system. Initially Bad Company Tactical was focusing their efforts on handgun holster systems, attaching their R2S to the Picatinny rail of Ed Readmore. Dark Storm is continuing down the path of making R15s available for those in the less fortunate states such as California and New York. Fuel this endeavor the company is working with the California company Bear Flag Defense in introducing the company's polymer read more Savage released a significant new product enhancement this year with the Savage AccuFit system for the company's acoustic on the 10 commercially available model 110 bolt action rifles that form one of the flagship product lines. Essentially taking a page out of polymer read more.